Okay. Wow. Pretty good size, huh? Amazing. What's all this instrumentation here? This all this instrumentation is for basic flight testing. Oh, for flight testing. Yeah, flight testing. It all was really tied into your electrical system mm -hmm. and your system information related to your hydraulics, generators, um, engine control systems, vibration analyzers. They were all tied into these particular boxes. Wow. Now, um, I know this airplane all, pretty much it only flew once, yes, right? Yes, that's correct. And it didn't go very high off the water. It got off the water about 70 feet. About 70 feet. Yes. Now, did they, was there any record or did they have uh, any calculations or com anything that would uh, have let them have an idea of what would be its uh, service ceiling if it was to fly up higher? Its service ceiling, I believe, was close to 20,000 feet. Wow. That's the way, it, that's what they were that's what they were targeting for, for certifications, mm -hmm. was 20,000 feet. Uh -huh. And then it had a, I believe, 4,100 mile distance. That's a pretty good range. Yeah, pretty good range for it. Oh yeah, more than, a lot more than coast to coast. Right. You had, for fuel load, you had uh, 14,000 gallons of gasoline. 14,000 gallons, wow. 14 tanks. 1,000 gallons a piece. 14 1,000 gallon tanks. Wow, that's... And a max load on this aircraft, I think, was 400,000 pounds. 400,000. Now, how much did the airplane weigh itself? Like, what's the empty weight of the airplane? I want to say it was a little over 150, 200,000. 200,000 pounds? Wow. Amazing. The other thing I want to point to you in here in the back. Uh huh. This is one of the only aircraft that you can actually walk out into the wing spar, the entire length of the wing, all the way down on the right wing to the number eight engine. And on the left wing, all the way down to the number one engine. To the number one engine. So this, what we're looking at here, is the leading edge of the right wing. This is the wing root yeah. of the right wing. Oh, the wing root. Okay. The wing root, with engines five, six, seven, and eight on the right hand side. And on my left, you have the wing root for engines one, two, three, and four. Pretty impressive. And what was the idea behind being able to walk out to the engines? Could you actually do any servicing? You couldn't do any maintenance on the engines uh -huh. because of the way the Pratt & Whitney 4360 was designed. Uh -huh. A majority of the engine actually is out beyond the firewall. Uh -huh. So they were limited as to, they couldn't do any work on the engine per se, but they could actually go out there and check for any type of leaks and any type of servicing on the engine. On the engines. Yeah, I imagine they got really, really hot too. Yes. What you're looking at here are your auxiliary power units. This is the APU, okay. It's the APU, it's wow. two Franklin four-cylinder aircraft engines connected to generators. This oh yeah, one, they're horizontally opposed engines, right? Looks mm -hmm. like. Right. Wow. Yep. This tank that's behind you uh -huh. is a 180, 180 gallon oil tank. 180 gallon oil it tank. It is a reserve oil tank. Uh -huh. It is controlled by uh, electronic switches up on the flight engineer station. Uh -huh. The flight engineer has the ability to monitor oil consumption on each of the engines. So you and if necessary, he can tap into this tank to direct any oil to engines that to are an engine that needs on the left. Exactly, anything on the left or anything on the right. 
So I remember I saw another tank over there. Those are the actually the tank for that That's particular the tank engine. For that particular for that engine, engine. itself, correct. Wow. Yep. That's pretty amazing. Let me look, let me look at this panel here. What they got here? That's a flight engineer station. Flight engineer. That panel actually worked in conjunction with our flight engineer panel, which we'll look at here in a second. Yes. But you can see in regards to, um, well, everything that's associated to that looks like it gives you altitude, attitude. The pressurization. It gives you all your pressurization. It was actually pressurized, huh? Because. I think your pressurization is more what's in the tank. I don't think ah, this is a pressurized, a pressurized aircraft. Okay. No. I see. So that flight deck deep pressure is for that for the uh, for for the water. You mean or the? Well, for down in the for down in the tanks. In the tanks. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. Let's slide up here and let's get your picture taken. So the, this here is part of the. Uh, but you told me about the ventilation system, this right? Tied, for the this air purification. Is tied to the air purification system. Uh huh. And the manifold that you see just aft of your pilot seat, with the with the manifold going up and over, we have the ability to move that up and turn it uh -huh. where it would actually be blowing down directly on top of the pilot. I see. And this here is. Uh, this is your navigator. communications oh. navigation. Communications, uh huh. Wow. And then behind you is the flight engineer station. Wow, look You'll at all see these your gauges. engines numbered across the top, one through eight. And then, of course, they're red in columns. Uh-huh. In columns, yes, for each engine. Yes. Look at that. Wow. These are the, what are those little levers here? The, the levers right there that have the E and the H's on them. Uh -huh. Those are our ability to trim the engines. Uh -huh. Trim meaning that you can give the aircraft slight trim movements that will help the pilot with his command and control of the th throttle response. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. Now in order to move the flight control surfaces, did it have hydraulics? Yes. I would imagine it because they It had hydraulic assisted, huge. it had electric hydraulic assisted flight controls. Okay. You had to, just with the oh, size yeah. of the There's just size no of way. Your flaps and rudders and everything else, there was no way you could physically move that by yeah, upper human, body strength, yes. or arm and body strength. Yeah. No way. No, I bet. That's amazing. Here we have the co-pilot seat. Well, this is interesting. Can I see that in the pilot yeah, seat? Absolutely. In fact, let's get your picture taken. That's what you paid for. Now, let me ask you something because this is pretty, pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, what is? What is the uh, what is this joystick over here? I mean, it looks pretty modern for being it's modern for a 1940s aircraft. Yes, but that was actually a trim control. Okay. Wow, it's definitely very modern for a 1940s aircraft. Okay. Back at me. There we go. Let's get you in the picture. Gotcha. All right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me just take some quick video of all these buttons. Yep. Are you a pilot? Yes. Are you? Yes. Great. A couple things I want to point out. Uh huh. Is when he flew this aircraft on that November day in 1947. Uh -huh. He did not have eight throttles. He had four. He had four he throttles. He had one throttle for every two engines. Look at that. Hi, hi. Here we go. These are the throttles, right? Yes, correct. So he had actually four of them. So he actually had four. Uh -huh. And Howard Hughes, being uh, a man of redundancy, 
wanted to have that ability to control each particular throttle independently of one another. Uh -huh. So he had his team come in and design the throttle quadrant to put one throttle for each engine. We're experiencing some severe vi vibrations back here. Ah. It might be in your best interest to put the airplane back in the water. So therefore, took off, can you ground can... effect or not, and then put it back into the water. Okay. So that's why, otherwise, yeah, he, I mean, he was already airborne, I'm sure. He... he was already airborne. Yes. In fact, evidence of that, when you leave the tour today and you walk down the stairs back to the museum floor, go to the back of the airplane, looking up at the empennage or the uh, tail section uh, of the yeah, plane, yeah, yeah. you'll see what looks like a zipper around the circumference of the tail. Okay. That's the area that they've taken and reinforced as far as the tail section of the airplane. In order to pretty much to fix, to fix whatever was vibrate, causing that vibration. Yes, that's where they determined the vibration was coming from. I see. But they just never got around to fly it again. That's correct. In fact, after he flew it that day, he put the aircraft in his own specially designed, climately controlled hangar and maintained it in flight-ready condition for 33 years.